loves, welcome back to another video here on my channel. Or if you happen to be new, welcome. My name is Sharin and I would appreciate it if you could hit that like and subscribe button. So today's video is another nail art inspired by my shirt. This shirt is getting its own spotlight. It is from Lavender and Lace Boutique. I will link all their information in the description bar below. But the reason this shirt is so special, they named it after me. I'm gonna quickly show you how cute is this thing. It's just a t-shirt. It's so, so pretty and vibrant. I absolutely love it. Um, every Monday, Lavender and Lace does a little Facebook and Instagram live where they show all the items they're launching for the week. And when I saw them show the shirt, I wanted it instantly. And then when I heard that it was named after me, I didn't know whether to scream or stop, start bawling because I was so happy, like happy tears. Um, so I'm just really grateful to them. I absolutely love this. This is such a Sharin shirt. So I knew I needed to make a tutorial inspired by this. Uh, the second I saw it, I felt inspired. So I'm hoping you guys love this quick, easy tutorial. I'm going to be using some art inks and some gel polish. So if you are interested, keep watching. Bye. Okay, so here's the shirt. As you can see, it has some purples, blues, and some pinks, and then obviously the black and white for the leopard. So I'm going to set that aside. Now I skipped ahead a little bit. I applied the Ugly Duckling uh, White. This is in their gel pots, and this is number two. So I applied that. And then for the glitter, I applied the Ugly Duckling number 26. This is such a beautiful beautiful silver and I'm not even a big fan of silver but I really love that one so what I did for all of the nails I applied the ugly duckling matte and shiny coat so I'm going to be using art inks today and opera only sticks to matte coat so these art inks only stick to a matte coat so I used the matte over top of all the white nails and then I use the shiny coat on top of the glitter so that's what I've done so far I figured that was easy for you guys to do yourself instead of me showing you but now I'm gonna go in with the art inks I love art inks I if you guys haven't tried them I do have a few other videos I'll link them in the description bar below but the ones I'm gonna go in with today is this number five which is a beautiful pink this number nine I may use this one, I'm not 100% sure, but this is number seven and number 29. This is a pastel purple. So those are the four I grabbed. And then I went in and poured a little bit of the Opry liquid in my little dampen dish here. So I'm gonna set that over here to the side. And I grabbed some paper towel just because I tend to spill art inks quite easily. And I'm using my little Opry brush. It looks like this. This one is pretty worn out. I've used it forever. But it is such a nice brush to do the marbling effect with. Okay, so first things first. The more liquid you have in your brush, the more separated the art inks are gonna get on the nail. Um, I have explained this in other videos. If you go in with the art inks on top of a shiny nail, they'll actually just slide off. They won't grip onto the actual nail color. So that is why you need to apply a matte coat. So it almost like sucks in, like the matte coat sucks it in and the art inks grip onto the mat. Hopefully <laughs> that makes sense, but that's how art inks work. 
And the more liquid you have in your brush to smear the color around, the more liquidy and muted the colors are going to get. Now, this is kind of almost like tie-dye, so I might make it a little bit more softer looking. That's kind of what I'm thinking, but we'll see when it actually, or when I come to actually apply the colors. So I'm just gonna open the bottles. Okay, so we're gonna start with the pinky, and sorry, one other thing. When you apply art inks, do all of the nails first before you go and apply a gel coat over top. If you go in too quickly, they and they haven't had enough time to uh, to fully dry, you actually risk the top coat chipping or whatever color you applied on top, it might chip um, because there's still some liquid that was in your brush that's been dabbed on the nail. So just make sure, I usually wait about five to 10 minutes, like I'll do one full hand, let it dry, and while I'm letting it dry, I'm working on the other hand. And I like to try and wait up to 10 minutes. It may seem long, but that's when I go in, I'll apply bling or something like that, just to make sure the nails are fully, fully dry before I apply my top coat. And also applying a white background will make the colors pop out more. But you can definitely use art inks on whatever color your heart desires. Okay, just gonna take some liquid in my brush. I'm just gonna soften this up. Okay, see how that really just softened it up instead of being like harsh lines like this one? And different type of matte coats will adhere the product to the nail differently. So some like, in, um, for instance, the Magic Gel matte coat, it is, it's very textured top coat. So the color just clings really, really strongly and it's hard to blend the colors out. So I would try and go in with a more smooth uh, top coat, a more smooth matte coat. That way you still are able to blend the colors around. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with my next color, which is blue. In the shirt, there's a lot more blue and pink than there is purple, so I'm kind of just trying to coat most of the nail with the pink and the blue. Okay, now I think I'm going to use maybe a mixture of the purples. Okay, so now that we have that purple down, I am gonna go back in with the pink and the blue a little bit to make them pop out a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm just loading up my brush and we're gonna start diffusing this. I seriously love that. It's so pretty. Okay, and 
and this last one. Very like unicorn vibe so far. Okay, so I'm gonna go off camera and do the exact same thing to the thumb and that way these have some time to dry in between. Okay, so I grabbed my little stitch palette and I applied some white, some black, and some more of that silver on here. And I grabbed two Ugly Duckling brushes. So this one in the fancy packaging comes in all of the brushes, but they also have these ones that are called the student brushes. They're um, less expensive because they're not as fancy packaging, but I personally love these because I tend to go through striping brushes really quickly because I do not take good care of them. Um, so I buy a lot of these fancy ones but I just wanted to show you the difference. So this one right here is called the striper and it's just a long brush like that. And then this one is called detailer number two. This is my favorite brush from them. It's super, super tiny. So this is what I'm gonna use right now to to apply the leopard print, but then we're gonna go up and touch it up a notch. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go in and we're gonna make a bunch of these big circle leopard spots. Okay, so the next step I'm going to do is stick these into the light and cure them for 30 seconds. And I'm going to do that to the thumb as well off camera. Okay, so the next step is the black. And first thing I'm gonna do is all of the, all of, the areas around the white spots and then we'll go in and fill in some of the other emptier spots. So on the actual shirt, it has multiple different um, leopard spots. There's some that have three spots like this one, some that only have two like that, and then there's some that only have one like that one. So I'm just trying to incorporate all three different styles. Okay, so now we are gonna go in with random little spots. Okay, that's one nail and I'm just gonna continue and do all the rest of the nails. Okay, so there are those nails. I'm gonna go off camera, finish the thumb up, and then we'll be back to finish the design I have in mind for this nail. I am going to take the silver and apply it to the inside here on each side. just a straight down line or I guess it's not really straight down it's kind of slanted but <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, I'm going to give that a cure for 30 seconds. Okay, so we're out of the light. I'm gonna take that same striper brush and I'm taking the black now and we are actually going to fill in this area. And you guessed it, I'm gonna do that same thing to the bottom. So if you were to recreate this nail, it might be quicker for you to paint a full black nail and then do a section where it's a white. Um, that might be a lot quicker, but I wasn't exactly sure what I was gonna do when I started this, so. <laughs> That is why I did not do that. Okay, so there is that nail. I think that looks so cool. So I'm gonna give that a full cure now at 60 seconds, and then we'll be back to apply my favorite part, the bling. Okay, to apply the crystals, I'm going to be using my Ugly Duckling Blinger tool, as well as the Ugly Duckling Shticket. This is my holy grail product to apply um, crystals. Now, these crystals are not actual uh, Swarovski crystals, they're just from Amazon, but they are super nice regardless. And I pulled out um, the shape ones and just the little circle ones. And these are the Aurora ABs. And of course, if you know me at all, I had to use some billion beads. At this point, I'm sure you all know how much I love billion beads. I'm mainly going to speed it through me applying the bling. I will make a detailed bling video. I have had so many requests for that. So don't worry, ladies, it's coming. Um, but for this specific set, I've decided to apply a little bit of bling to the middle finger and a little bit to the ring finger. I didn't want to add too, too much because I don't want to take away from the beautiful, colorful, background that we've created. Okay, there is one nail. I'm just gonna give that a freeze cure for about 10 seconds. Okay, and then for this nail, um, I'm not exactly sure still. I'm thinking maybe just a line of bling. Okay, what do you guys think of that? I don't want to add it to the bottom because I don't want it to be too chunky down here. But I think that is pretty good. It's not too overpowering with a lot of bling, especially since the background is, is quite a lot. <laughs> it really stands out. Um, yeah, I think this is really good. So I'm gonna give this a cure and then we're gonna go in with the top coat. Okay, so I was debating if I should go with the matte or shiny finish for all of these nails. But when I look at this, the shirt, it almost has this kind of, it's not silk. <laughs> But you know how silk kind of has that shiny finish? Well, to me, this almost has kind of a shiny finish because it's not like a sweat 
like a t-shirt sweatshirt kind of material it's more of like blousy material and to me that is more of a shiny material even though i obviously know this is not shiny but hopefully my description makes sense of why i think i'm gonna go in with a shiny Okay, so that's what they look like. I am going to give them a full cure now. I've already applied the shiny coat to this nail, so I'm just gonna go off camera, do the thumb, and then I'll be back. All right, here is the finished look. What do you guys think? Comment below, I'd love to hear from you. Is this a style that you might try recreating? If so, make sure you take me because I'd love to see. And I did decide to do the thumb mat just to see what it would look like. And as you can see, it definitely diffused the color. It's not as bright, but I still think it kind of looks pretty, but I do prefer the shiny. And I just want to give a big thank you to Lavender and Lace once again again and if you have watched till the end thank you so much for watching and i hope you all have a wonderful day bye